Let's take a look at the Revic PMR wind vector versus base wind inputs. The Revic PMR interface allows you, in a lot of cases, a simple user experience and a more complex user experience. When we talk about base wind versus wind vector inputs, that's a perfect example of a simple and a complex user experience. So with the virtual ballistic turret, when I raise my turret and I dial to a range and the display shows the range, if I'm in the base wind mode, what I get for a wind output is a generic left or, or right wind. And it gives me a solution for that left or right wind. For all the uh, ballistic experts, you know that spin drift is important and it's also important to have a wind direction because then you can start dealing with your aerodynamic jump and some other factors. So we can, we can equate a base wind to kind of an entry level or closer range wind input. Uh, and if you run in that mode, technically for most hunting situations, it's more than adequate. We're talking seven, 800 yards, a base wind input is just fine. I usually run a base wind input that's 10 miles per hour. I got stuck on that mode from a long time ago, but I think it probably makes a lot of sense to run a base wind input of say five miles per hour and then uh, practice kind of our gunworks bracketing technique where you estimate wind zero, five, 10, 15 miles per hour using Mirage, using a wind meter, etc. Then you'll just basically say, okay, five mile an hour, use that one. 10 mile an hour, two times that solution. So it's a really fast way to, to get a value, scale it up or down for your shooting situation. In most hunting situations out to a half mile and beyond, or half mile and inside, that's going to be more than adequate for what you need to do. As we progress in our shooting and we become more and more advanced and, and we start using more advanced equipment, some other corrective factors become more important. We want to correct for spin drift. We want to correct for aerodynamic jump. We want to correct for headwind and tailwind. Uh, all of those factors uh, start to become more important as we shoot in that half mile and beyond. And so those further distances require additional corrections. With the Revic PMR, it's very simple to get all of those corrections instantaneously. Uh, and, and usually with the way I would approach the situation on a really complex wind or shoot is I will dope my wind first. I will say, okay, I know that target's down there a long way, so that's 1400 yards or 1300 yards. Okay, what is my wind vector doing? Okay, I've got a 10 o'clock wind and it's 13 miles per hour. What I'll do is first, I'll get in here and I will dial the wind vector. And it's, it's a really simple entry. All I have to do is from the main display, if I push a forward or back button, left or right button, it takes me right to the wind menu. And if I keep pushing that forward button, it will dial around to the direction that I need to come from. So there's 10 miles per hour. Now, in the wind vector menu, I can just use the up and down arrows to get my amount. So we'll just scroll this up to 13. So now you can see I've got a 10 mile an hour wind, or 10 o'clock wind, 13 miles per hour. So if you let it time out, it'll go back to the main display or you can just press the enter button and that'll take you back to the main display. Now, if I look in the main display, now all of a sudden, in that center circle, I see that same input. I see the 13 and I see the 10 o'clock arrow indicator. You'll also notice to the right of the circle, the top information tells me that I need to hold left. So it's actually indicating my direction that I need to hold. And that's telling you that now all of a sudden we're doing that wind correction from a vector based solution, which is going to add spin drift and all those other valuables. So the data that I have below says left and then how many minutes. So if I dial up to a target that's way out there, something in the 1300s, okay, that's going to tell me a left solution and it's big. It's, it's eight plus minutes. I like to put the wind vector in first and then dial the elevation because of the aerodynamic jump. If I do it the other way around and I dial the elevation, then I put the wind vector, you're going to see your yardage change and that's just that correction that you'll need to make for arrow jumps or headwind tailwind. So you'll have to dial again. So my process is always get the wind vector first 
enter the wind vector, and then dial the range last. And always, when I'm dialing range, something else to consider, make sure you're pointing at your target because it's measuring your inclination in real time as well. So kind of a nice little process there. Uh, you need to go through and practice that and develop that routine so that when you're in the field, you're hunting or anything like that, it's all coming natural. And it is very complex and there's a lot of things going on. If you practice, you'll find that this is just as simple and it's actually so much faster than using your old traditional methods, calculators, charts, or the old BDC turrets. This is the Revic PMR and that is how to adjust wind using a wind vector or a base wind.